God damn, Shogun is pure Kino. I just got done watching chapter two of Shogun, Servant of Two Masters, and I was on the edge of my seat. If you haven't seen Shogun already, stop what you're doing right now. Stop watching this video. Get off YouTube. Maybe subscribe first so you can come back and join us for the discussion. Go sign up for FX or Hulu or wherever you can watch Shogun in your region. And finally, watch Real Entertainment. I am not affiliated with these companies, I'm just sick of people watching garbage. Normally, watching an hour long show, I'm checking my emails, checking the weather forecast, getting up to grab a drink. I did not move a muscle all throughout its entire running time. In fact, every time the screen went dark, I was praying that it was not the end of the episode, as I was enjoying it that much. My only question is, how will they resolve all of the plot threads they have woven so far in only eight remaining episodes? Never before have I watched two episodes of a TV show and thought that I hope this goes on for multiple seasons. Normally, I'm a one-and-done kind of guy. So many factions are vying for control of Japan. The Bushos, the Portuguese, the Catholics, and now the English. Each faction has its own sub-factions who wish to rule for their own reasons and hope to succeed due to their own strengths. The acting in this episode was brilliant, as was the pacing. I got goosebumps when John Blackthorne described to the Japanese the way the European powers viewed the Japanese Empire. Reminiscent of the Star Trek TNG Season 4 Episode 14 First Contact, when the Chancellor Durkin said to John Luke Picard, This morning I was the leader of the universe as I know it. This afternoon, I'm only a voice in a chorus. But for the Japanese, it was not a good day. The machinations going on in this episode. I feel like I need a corkboard with the red string on it to keep track of it all. Add to this the requirement for the Japanese to save face while also pushing their own agendas. Wow! You get twist upon twist. And these are actual twists, not just mystery box garbage. There are scenes where every line of dialogue adds a new dimension to the story. I'm giving Shogun Episode 2 a 10 out of 10. It's been a long time since I've watched anything new that has held my attention this deeply. I'll be thinking of this show as I sleep, as I shower, possibly even as I poop. If you haven't started watching, start watching now. Now onto some spoilers. Character Recap John Blackthorne, English sailor, loyal to the English crown and a Protestant Christian, enemy of the Portuguese and hoping to form an alliance to destroy the Japanese in Japan. Lord Yoshi Torinaga, where's gold? One of the five busho on the council that governs the country until the heir can come of age. Seemingly John Blackthorne's best hope of an alliance that will see him remain alive. Trusted advisor to the former Taiko, he turned down an opportunity to rule until the heir came of age, seeing as it is putting a target on his back as well as the future heir. Lady Toto Mariko, Lord Toronaga's interpreter, who can speak Portuguese. Daughter-in-law of Toto Hiramatsu, Lord Toronaga's most trusted advisor. I may have misinterpreted this, but Mariko-sama seems to also be the mother of the future heir. Toto Hiramatsu, where's Brown? Lord Toronaga's right-hand man, an aging samurai, father of the husband of the mother of the future heir. Ishido Kazunari, where's Silver? Seemingly the most powerful of all the Busho. He is attempting to have Toronaga executed. However, Yabushigi has pointed out to him that once Toronaga is removed, the remaining Christian Bushos will outnumber him and he will be next to fall out of favor. He hates what he has become, a bureaucrat, and seemingly would welcome battle. Father Martin Alvito, a Portuguese Catholic priest, seemingly more interested in lining their pockets than spreading their faith. Father Martin interpreted for Blackthorn upon his first meeting with Toronaga. However, his desire to throw Blackthorn under the bus was thwarted by Toronaga's insistence upon Mariko Sama being present to practice her Portuguese. Father Delacqua head of the Jesuits in Japan and seemingly the most influential Portuguese man in the land. Obviously sees Blackthorn as an immediate threat as well as the damage to his relationship with the Bushos. 
has Blackthorne's journals, which while incriminating towards Blackthorne, are also incriminating towards the Portuguese. The remaining three Bushos, Kayama Ukon Saranaga, Red, Christian, yet driven more by power and greed. Sugiyama, Grey, descended from the richest family in Japan. Ono Harunobu, White, suffering from leprosy which drove him to convert to Christianity. So we have five Bushos, all with separate motivations. Two of the Bushos are Christian, Kiyama and Ono. So they will back each other as well as the Portuguese. They see the Protestant Blackthorn as a heretic and demand his execution immediately. Whether they demand his execution for his heresy or purely to benefit their profits from the Portuguese traders is yet to be seen. Sugiyama seems like he'll just be a pawn. Probably loyal to the future heir, but will also be swayed due to his vast resources. Ishido seems to want nothing more than to eliminate Toronaga and then do the same to the future heir. The Portuguese have been revealed to be wanting to install their own government and divide the world between themselves and the Spanish. They have a fortress full of weapons and hired soldiers, Ronan and Macau. Once word gets out that the Portuguese and Spanish see Japan as merely another land to conquer, all hell will break loose. The reaction from Torinaga and his retinue, when Blackthorne told them that the Spanish agreed to allow Portugal to have Japan, was one of absolute shock. How dare some outsiders view us as merely a land to be owned by foreigners? They went from thinking that they were in command of the Portuguese to knowing that they have been played for fools. Blackthorne spies a piece of Lord Torinaga's armour and inquires about it. What are the odds he'll end up wearing it? Also, he did it. He did the thing. He said the name of the show. Not a great stretch considering the name and the subject matter. I'm still curious about the black ship. It seems to be the main transport for the Portuguese. The Japanese and Chinese won't trade, so the Portuguese act as middlemen, taking a profit. The Portuguese want it to be allowed to leave, and Torunaga, as the president of foreign relations, has denied them that right. He mentioned to Father Martin that he wants to see what Blackthorn knows before the ship is allowed to leave. He also let Father Martin know that they are aware of their secret bases. Father Delacroix wants Blackthorn dead so the black ship can leave port, and Kiyama is more than willing to see it is done. There was an attack on Blackthorn's life by an assassin. However, Toronaga was smart enough to place Blackthorn in his quarters while he awaited the assassin's attack. Once the assassin was killed, they realised that the Portuguese really want him dead. Blackthorn, hearing the commotion, attempts to help, and while defending Toronaga, gets sliced by the assassin's blade. Surely this will hold him in higher esteem with Taranaga. Shogun is so well produced, everything is approaching perfection. There's no fat to be trimmed. Everything that is on screen is there for a reason. The slightest glance could be as important as any death. It is well and truly deserving of its 10 out of 10 rating. Not a single scene is boring, even if just to look upon, let alone the implications current plot points can have on the overarching story. My only fear is that they do not keep this up for the whole season. A lot of these shows will send the first three or four episodes out for review, and the reviews that make it in the newspapers and online are purely based off the few early episodes. The producers know this, so they will pack the first couple of episodes with brilliance. Plot, acting, effects, costumes, sets, all top notch. Then once the reviews are out, the quality drops. Suddenly. All of the scenes use the same sets or the plot slows to a crawl. I'm hopeful with Shogun as there has already been a television production in the 1980s so it has to at least be better than that version. I'm looking forward to next week's episode. Next Tuesday cannot come quick enough. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time and have a good one.